You know that thing that people do when they have long ass PowerShell scripts with multiple tasks in them and for some reason they don't want task number three to run if task number one or two for some reason will fail. So they just jam in some more uh, lines of code there just to verify that line number one and line number two actually did what they were supposed to do. You know that thing? Well, there's a better way and it's called a try catch block and here's how you use it. By the way, uh, I do stream from time to time over on Twitch and uh, links to that in the description below. And feel free to pop by if you have any questions about uh, this video. If I missed something, you have additional questions or if you just want to come hang, uh, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, links to that also in the description down below. All right, I'm over here in Visual Studio Code and uh, let's see if I can't show you how a try catch block works. Um, first thing you should probably know is that in PowerShell you have uh, basically two types of errors. There are non-terminating errors and then there are terminating errors. Uh, we'll get to that in a second and I'll uh, show you why it's important. Um, but first I wanted to just show you how a try catch block uh, looks. Uh, so this is your basic try catch uh, block. Uh, you have your try section here, uh, which is basically what you want PowerShell to try to do. Um, and then if any error occurs, uh, any terminating errors uh, occur in here, then you have this catch block. And the, the catch block is basically what you want to do whenever the error occurs. Um, so uh, let's do an example here with a get process. Um, let's call it e Explorer. And if I run that, you see everything works as uh, expected. Uh, no errors. Yay. But if I uh, replace Explorer with uh, something that doesn't exist, like blah, blah, uh, you will see that I get an error. All right. Um, in a partial script, uh, you should probably handle this in some way. So let's just um, try to uh, uh, get this error catched. Uh, I'll insert another try catch block and then I'll put my get process in there. Uh, and, and in my catch block, I'll just put uh, something simple like write hosts. Uh, catched something and first let's just try with our first example with Explorer um, and if we run this uh, you see that everything works uh, quite like it did uh, the last time around uh, all you get is the process information for Explorer and uh, the things in the catch block does not get uh, processed at all um, and if we change the Explorer uh, back to blah, blah, uh, you then would expect that the code in the catch section on line seven here uh, would run, but hmm, it doesn't. Uh, it just spits out the error message. And that's because um, the uh, get process blah, blah uh, produces a non-terminating error. Uh, that means that uh, yes, it's an error, uh, but it's, it's not, not so bad. We'll just continue on. Um, but if we want to force this to be a terminating error uh, so that our catch section runs, uh, you could add error action stop to it. Uh, this uh, forces the get process uh, to uh, produce a terminating error if any error occurs. So if I try to run it again now, you will see that uh, it does not spit out the error message from before. Uh, it just says catched something. So that's how you can um, do a basic catch of any error that occurs. And as you, uh, as you um, encounter errors in your try, section, uh, any additional lines will never be processed. So if I add a 
right host uh, not to be seen uh, in here. And I run this again. You'll see that my right host not to be seen line does not get processed at all because uh, on line four here, uh, a terminating error is produced. And then we just jump right in our catch section. Um, this is your kind of your basic try catch, um, but you can also try to catch specific um, uh, error exceptions. So if I add another catch section here, oops, uh, I can specify the type of exception that I want to catch. So uh, for example, if I want a uh, process command exception to be catched, I just do it like this. And I can put my right host uh, and catched, oops, catched process uh, command exception like that. Now, uh, this part should uh, trigger because um, the get process should produce an error of this type. So if I run all these lines now, you'll see that it catched a process command exception. That's because the error that we saw with our get process uh, blah blah uh, is in fact a get process command exception. So that's a kind of uh, way to catch specific types of errors that might occur. Um, and you'll see that if I change line four here now, um, let's do ID, uh, get process ID, blah, blah. It should fail because uh, get process ID expects uh, a number and not a, um, not a uh, characters. Uh, so now it should not catch a process command exception, but rather something else. So if I run all these lines again now, and let's see what we get out of it. And as you can see, it catched something, um, which means it went all the way down here. So it tried to execute the code on line four here, um, but it encountered an error. And then it checked the first catch line and checked is, is it this kind of error? Well, it's not. Okay, then I'll go further down. And this way you can kind of uh, build upon uh, multiple catch uh, sections for every type of exception that your code might encounter and then do different kinds of error handling based on the error that you receive. And that's the basics of uh, try catch. Right, I hope that was informative. I hope that was valuable. And just keep in mind that try catch is something you should get comfortable using. And as you get comfortable, uh, you'll also begin to use it more and more. And you should. Um, please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you like the video. And uh, yeah, see you, see you next time.